Good morning, Calvary family. It is a beautiful Sunday, a day of resurrection, a day of being made new. Let us not forget this, and let us not just celebrate this reality on Sunday, but let us remember it continuously. I will begin with announcements. So we wanted to have in-service and begin our in-services with communion on August 2nd, but we decided to push it back one week, so it will be the following Sunday, um, just so we can continue with different precautions. And we also realized that a lot of our congregants didn't utilize email as well as social media. And so what we've done is we have filmed the different protocol and how to do things and what things will look like coming back to the church. And then Joe Latona, um, God bless him, thank you for his time and talents. He's going to put it together in a DVD and we will be mailing that out to the different households that we know do not utilize social media. And so we want them to be prepared. We want them to know what things will be like as they come back. We have a lot of different protocols. We have a lot of different things, but it's, it's okay. It's all for your protection. We are continuing to be the church just in new ways together. And we're exploring this together and we're discerning it together. And so thank you for your patience. And I'm so excited to finally be back in your presence and be back in the building together. Um, I think that is just gonna be a day to truly celebrate and not to mention I have missed, missed communion. So that will be wonderful to commune with all of you again. Um, I just wanna continue to say we are here for you in any way that you need. Um, I wanna thank the castles, Stephanie and Donald, for holding Compline here on Monday nights during this time so that those who yearned for this space, this beautiful and sacred space, still had the accessibility to come in and to worship and to do Compline. Thank you so much for that. Please continue to be formed. Uh, as you know, on Facebook, Marilyn Stein is continuing on Tuesday mornings, and I'm doing Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to bring the devotional. Although this past week, I apologize, I have been having issues with Facebook on all my devices. So it is a glitch in my cloud. So technology is wonderful, except for when it does not work. But let us continue. We are still doing uh, morning prayer and on page 77 of your Book of Common Prayer. So let us begin in worship together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. And if you are able, please kneel. Most merciful God, we confess Therefore, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we, we have, have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the, For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, us that, we that we may delight, delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, the Son, to and, the to the Spirit, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. Come, let us adore him, hallelujah. Let us recite Psalm 100 together. Be joyful, Be joyful in the Lord, Lord all, all you lands. lands. Serve, Serve the, the Lord, Lord with gladness, and, and come, come before his presence with a song. song. Know, Know this, the, the Lord himself, himself is God. He, he himself has made us, and we are his. We are his, are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, 
go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm this morning is from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant the promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, to the Son, Son, and to the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place, and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, 
knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he knew, foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his, son, his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are far more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Another parable Jesus put to the, before the crowd. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in the branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and brought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into basket, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of ages. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of our Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. In our gospel reading of Matthew 13, 
It contains seven parables to show how Jesus conversed with his disciples. Now this displayed how God's kingdom is working right here on earth. We all know that a change is coming to the new life, the next life, but we are, and we all have to go that way. Jesus promised us a place where there's no pain, no sorrow, no brokenness, and no death. Most of us consider that kingdom to be entered after this life on earth, but Jesus makes it very clear that his purpose is to usher us into the kingdom of God here on earth. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I don't always understand it. And Jesus wanted to be sure that we understand the importance of his message. That's when Jesus began to speak in parables. Parable is a very simple lesson that has a, mes a message, a moral lesson, something that we can understand. It has to do with everyday uh, living instances that we might have. And he clearly wants us to hear what he has to say. And that's why in his conversation with his disciples, and that's why he wants us to have conversations with him. He wants us to listen and pay attention. Sometimes we can listen and not hear. And Jesus knows how important it is to listen and pay attention. So we might listen, but sometimes we don't hear the message that he's trying to tell us. I can remember when I was in the classroom, we had to start at the beginning of the year. We had to have guidelines. Very, I had five guidelines, very simple rules for them to follow, but I wanted my kids to have input into our lesson, into our uh, rules. So I would have my kids sit down. One person, I would whisper something in the ear, and they were to go around the classroom, and everybody was to deliver my message. I have the first person stand up and the last person. The last person would get up and say what she heard or he heard, and it was nothing like the message that I gave. And then the first person would always jump in and say, well, that's not what she said. This is what she said. And my lesson was to listen and pay attention. And it went on to show that the importance it was that you have to listen and pay attention because if you don't, you'll miss out on it. So our rule number one was always listen and pay attention. Now Jesus in his parable about the mustard seed, he talks about the kingdom of heaven. It's like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds. But when it's grown, it's greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in his, in his branches. I know everyone knows the saying that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. As a kid, I did try that. I tried it with a tree. And of course, it didn't work. But however, when I became older, I began to realize that those mountains don't have to be made of wood or of stone. Those mountains could be sorrow, prejudice, grief, regret, pain, and sadness. This week I got a call from my neighbors informing me that my mother's house was on fire. And although my mother has passed away, I still tried to keep her memories alive by keeping her house. I immediately left to go to my home, in which it will always be. You can't imagine the devastation it was when I got there. I had board up men charging at me, wanting to get my business. And, but most importantly to me, it was the sadness that I had because the memories of my life were going up in smoke. It was a mountain in my way, and I remembered about the faith, the size of a mustard seed. And I had to have that faith, faith at that time. I had to pray and ask the Lord for mercy and peace. And as always, he came through for me. He spoke another parable about the kingdom of heaven. It's like yeast in which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was all leavened. She was mixing the ingredients until the yeast had spread to all the flour. I don't know if you ever use yeast. I've used it a couple of times to make some rolls. 
But once you put that yeast into it, it, ch it changes a small bowl, a small ball of dough into a large ball. Because that yeast, what happens is, it goes in and it, it causes changes in it. It changes your form, it changes the shape, it changes everything about that flour. And as a matter of fact, I looked up to see what was three measures of flowers. It was 50 pounds of flour. So that, that was uh, quite a bit of bread that she was making. And also when you use yeast, you have to let it sit for a minute. But after a while, it, you let it look, I mean it grows into what you want it to be. But if you don't handle it then, it will continue to grow. And that's just like the kingdom of heaven. And that's what God is doing right here on earth, like the woman making the bread, uh, the flour, yeast. It's the good news of the gospel that comes into our lives, and the changes begin to take place. Jesus' call to follow him is more than just an invitation to prayer. What it summons for you to lose your life and to gain a new life and ultimate joy with him. In these parables, Jesus is letting us know that great things come from small beginnings. Jesus is talking about the gospel of the good news. Jesus died for our sins, and he resurrected from the dead to redeem and restore us. This is a new life that he offers. Just like the small mustard seed and the yeast mixed with the flour begins to expand. If you listen and pay attention, the gospel changes your life, your shape, your everything. It's about having a relationship with Christ. It's about reading, living in his word. And when the good news of the gospel gets into people, lives begin to change. And if you think a change is not coming, listen to this. Whoever thought that we'd have to walk around with masks on our face for protection, things can change. Whoever thought that the, during this pandemic that we'd have to isolate ourselves for long periods of time from our loved ones, things can change. Whoever thought that preachers would have to preach and teach to empty seats and broadcast over the internet, things can change. And whoever thought at the beginning of March you had a job, but by the end you had nothing, things can change. And whoever thought that when you look at a television show or a sports show with large audience, but now they have no one there, everything is going virtual, things can change. And what about when you go to the grocery store, the shelves, getting the things that, that you need, the that essentials that you need, and everything is empty? Those things can change. Sometimes God allows things to change so that we can become matured in his word and able to pay attention and listen, especially during this uncomfortable season. Think of the two parables of the mustard seed and the yeast and the changes that they made. When things change, we bec then become unbearable. There are three things that I want you to remember. The first thing being is that God is with you with everlasting love. He died, he sent his son to die for us and redeem us. Who do you know that will do that? And also God is all powerful. And remember that what he's done for you, he can be with you in one place and over in Africa in another place, helping someone else. Who do you know that can do that? And lastly, God has the last word. Say for an instance, you, the doctor told you that you can't make it or you're getting ready to get put out of your house, you've lost your job. God has that last word, and all you have to do is ask him for it. Let us pray. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, for his soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. The thought of the Lord, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Deborah. That was a beautiful word and very inspiring and very true. The kingdom of God does mold us and form us in the most unexpected ways, but in the ways that will bring us true life. So thank you, beautiful message. Let us continue together on page 96 of your Book of Common Prayer and let us recite the Apostles' Creed, our faith. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator creator of of heaven and and earth. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord. Our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe believe in the the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, the the Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, and thy thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our suffrages, which is on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now now and always. Day by day we bless you. We We praise praise your name name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have Have mercy mercy upon us, us. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put put our our trust trust in in you. you. For you, Lord, is our hope. And, and we, we shall, shall never, never hope, hope in vain. vain. Our colic for today, Almighty, Almighty God, God, the fountain of all wisdom, wisdom you, you know your necessities before we ask, ask and our ignorance in asking. Have, have compassion on your weakness, and mercy give us those things which, which for our unworthiness we, we dare not. not. And, and for, for our blindness we, we cannot ask. ask. Through the, Through the worthiness, worthiness of, of your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord, Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. I collect for guidance, which is on page 100. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, in you, you we live, live and move and have, and have our, our being. being. We, we humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your, by your Holy Spirit. Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, you, but but remember that we are are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next is for prayers and thanksgiving. We pray for Ada, Gwen, John, Jerry, Jan, Eileen, and Mick. And if you have any others, please say their names. Michael. Nicholas. May God have mercy. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. So we are going to start doing the peace of Christ, but in sign language. And so let me put my little handy dandy thing here. Um, and I'm gonna make sure I've been practicing this one with Liz. So, so I'm gonna look to her to make sure I have this right. But um, so the peace and then be with you. So we'll be doing that with each other if you're comfortable with it. I think it's kind of neat to learn this. Um, it's just, 
it's great. We can all give each other peace and the peace of God without actually touching one another. So that is a creative, fun way for us to do that. And then we know how to say God's peace be with you in sign language. So it is, it is a blessing to be able to do that. Let us, so um, now would also be a time when we receive the elements and we receive all that God has blessed you with and given you, um, especially during this time. I must say that we are a community that, um, you know, there hasn't been too many people that have really had to endure too much during this time. And you've been incredibly, incredibly um, generous and loving. And I just want to thank you for that. You've been giving to those whom we know have lost their jobs and have been without. So I just want to thank you for that. Please continue to give as God guides you. But I have been truly blessed by your giving um, and seeing that it has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Let us continue on page 101 in our Book of Common Prayer with our thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of, all of all mercies, mercies we, we, your, your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants, give you, you humble, humble thanks for all, all your, your goodness, goodness and, and loving kindness, kindness to us and, and to all whom you have made. made. We, bless we bless you for, for our creation, creation preservation, and, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, to whom, whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with joy in the faith. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Calvary, thank you so much for worshiping with us today, for resting in the presence of God and the truth that God is always with us, never forsakes us, and loves us more than we can comprehend. Have a blessed and beautiful day.